Ding dong YouTube, welcome back to the channel, The Jobless Coder here, and your resume is probably too long. Well you might ask yourself, how long exactly is a resume that is considered to be too long? Well I bet it's a good number of pages, maybe 10, maybe 15 pages? I mean, if you hand somebody your resume and it's 15 pages long, I can guarantee you they're not gonna bother reading it, that's gonna go in the trash. But you'd have to, I guess, assume that it's a good number of pages. WRONG! I'll show you, here is my resume. It is all of one, two, three pages long, and my resume is too long. Now, to be fair, this is three separate pages that my resume is on, uh, and that's just one-sided. My printer doesn't do that thing where it sucks it back in and prints it on the other side. But if I went to Staples, I could actually get it printed off and just use two pieces of paper because one of them would be double-sided. But apparently, three pages is too long, at least according to some people who have told me that they don't even look at a resume. They just throw it in the trash if it's any more than two pages or one and a half pages long. That's about as maximum as it should be, which to me doesn't sound all that fair. Because, I mean, realistically, what if you have somebody who is the best at what they do in any industry? My industry being specific is the computer uh, programming industry, but but for me, it's like, what if you're the best coder on planet Earth and you just scrap that resume because it's too long? Well, I don't know, maybe the best coder on planet Earth just knows that their resume needs to be under a page or no more than a page and a half, or at least the best coder on Earth probably doesn't even need a resume, they just have the companies go looking for them. And in some cases, and I think this is a huge problem with the industry that I'm in, a lot of the stuff is done automatically or through computer systems. So when you go on to some website or whatever and you submit your job application through the company website, they may actually have some automated filter that even rejects your resume if it doesn't match certain criteria such as, oh, if your resume is three pages or longer or if it's not under two pages, just automatically reject. And so you may get an email back that was like, oh, thank you for submitting your resume and you're not a good fit for the job. And that's just some generic response that you get. And you know, maybe a person on the on the company end didn't even get a chance to see your resume because they have that flag, that filter put into their system somewhere. Now keeping that in mind, I'm actually going to switch over to my desktop now and show you what my resume looks like so that I can kind of walk you through some of the things that perhaps I've picked up on and that can be shortened down or removed from the resume to help out on the actual lengthwise of it. And I don't really know myself, I'm kind of walking through this blind because this is the first that I've heard about my resume being too long. I've actually had my resume reviewed by several people that are currently working in the industry and they've told me to change various different things, but never once have they, those specific people, never once have those specific people told me that it's too long. But under the assumption that these other people perhaps may be right, let's have a look. So you can see here, it's got my name at the top, Evan Svensson, and it's got Senior Software Engineer. Now, one person who I guess is like one of those recruiting agents who sends me information because he quote unquote wants to help me get a job, uh, he mentioned to me, oh, well, Software Engineer is something different. Uh, okay, enlighten me then, because I got senior software engineer, if I put developer, or programmer, I mean, tomato, tomato, it's, it's the same freaking thing, what's the difference? And he didn't really explain the difference, but apparently there is a difference. He also tried to tell me that, oh, you can't be a senior because you're young and you don't have all this experience. And that's for somebody who's like seven or eight years into the job. Uh, no, senior is a title of the job position you work. It has nothing to do with your experience or your level of authority. It's just a title. And there's other people that tell me, yeah, they know people that like they're seniors or CTOs or CEOs of companies and they're like 20 years old. So... Like, don't tell me that you have to have seven to ten years of experience to get senior on your title, okay? 
All right, so senior software engineer. It's got my city here, Burnaby, British Columbia. Now, I did actually at one point have my full address on there, but somebody actually pointed out, no, no, you want to remove that. I don't even know why I put my full address, including my house number on there, because they're like, you have to consider that if somebody gets hold of your resume, they know that you're a software developer, which means you probably have pretty high pay, which means you probably have a lot of really high expensive technology in the house. Well, me personally, I think the most expensive single thing I have to my name is a $1,500 Alienware laptop with a broken screen. Um, but the thing is, I live in the basement suite here, and so if somebody comes by the house trying to rob me because they think I have all this fancy technology, my landlord probably does because they, they own the house. It's like a $3 million house. Um, and I don't really want my landlord upstairs getting robbed because of me, who's actually in the basement suite. So I took the address off and just don't use your address on your resume. You keep your city and that'll be fine. So going further down, then I have my contact information with my contact email. Uh, that's my university email, and so you want to keep it a professional email. If you have some goofy email that you use between friends, you, you don't want to use that on your resume. And then I have my phone number. And for the most part, this phone number should not change for at least quite some time. At least it, it depends on how it goes with... Uh, whether or not I get my phone service cancelled on me. Now I've got my education here, I've got the University of Lethbridge, and you can see it's only three years. Yes, I did three years of schooling and then I dropped out. There's reasons why I dropped out. I will make a video in the future on the reasons why I dropped out, but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out, oh, you don't have a degree because you only did three years of school. Unless maybe somebody just assumes that I blasted through in three years and got my degree. I did not. Okay, I've got my high school on here, and I put this back on. At one point, I was told to take it off because, oh, well, if you went to university, then you didn't go to high, or you had to have gone to high school. Well, I just put that on there anyways. Then I've got my professional skills. I've got programming, and I've got a list of different languages here. Um, these are just some of my top languages. And then object-oriented programming, and iOS and Android development. Um, now, I'll probably take this off, object-oriented programming, because like, I mean, C++ and C uh, Sharp and Java, like that kind of, it's, it's already explained by the fact I have that skill. Uh, iOS and Android development, uh, I can maybe throw that further down under software, but it's not specifically related to programming. I've got the software here, uh, Windows, OS X, Linux, Git, Microsoft Video, uh, Visual Studios and Xamarin, Code Igniter, Amazon AWS, Xcode, Unity 3D, XAMPP, MySQL, and Stencil. And this is an area that is changed quite drastically. I throw stuff on, I take stuff off. This is probably the most variable section of my resume. And when I get to where I actually went about fixing my resume, I'll show you why. So then I've got my work experience. So the company that I was at that I recently got fired from, it was called Cloud Park Inc. Uh, they were doing a uh, smart parking technology. And so I've got a small description about what the company did. And then I've got a couple bullet points about what I specifically did at the company. It's got the corporate website on there that you can go to. Um, and yes, it was a senior full stack engineer. I mean, I was working remote at home in my basement here. That's not something you get with a junior level position. And my boss explicitly told me that too. And not only that, but I had a, basically full access to the entire system. Them. That's not something you get as a junior software developer, okay? So, uh, I've got my thing down here. Zazu, this was a startup company for Internet of Things that my friend started and it basically flopped. A bit of information on that. Uh, I worked a co-op at uh, the college, a uh, website support technician. And this was a specifically set up through the university as a co-op job. And again, this guy who was quote unquote trying to help me was like, oh, well you should put your stuff on there like co-ops and whatnot because they don't care what you did in, in school. 
well, maybe they don't care what I took for classes, but this is a job. This was a four month summer job that I worked. I have references. One of my references actually gave me a certification on Indeed. And so there you go. I'm going to put that on my resume. And then Pocket Bug Games, September 2013 to present. This is my small mobile games company. And I have a website. I have the apps in the Android store. They're no longer on iOS because I haven't been able to renew my subscription. It's expensive and I just don't have the money um, and I've never made any more than a dime well $20 to be exact but I've spent well over a thousand dollars in licensing fees so this is not a company that I've ever made any money with but going further down then this is near the bottom of page two this is portfolio projects and I just have a big list here I've got a couple game jams that I went to I had this project that I did in in university and uh, it was under the direction of the professor he actually put it up on some website somewhere uh, and he was writing a research paper on it in which our, our names of everyone involved was going to be included in the research paper and then I have with my mobile games company pocket bug games I've got the two most recent apps on there which was Bollachi and Water Drop Free and I've got the Android links here the iOS doesn't have a clickable link because like I said it's no longer in the store and then I've got these links under there as well and that that's a bit of the redundancy that I'm going to get into when I go to the next uh, when I go to the next part of this video so now I have website development, and I've got my website there, Pocket Book Games. That was under Tech Skull Studios. Uh, this is some freelancing work that I did over the weekend for somebody. Just a very simple, elegant, nice-looking website, web application, really, uh, made with Bootstrap. And then virtual science fair, that was when I was in high school and I did the science fair every year. And for those two years, I did a website about the project, put it up online on their, on their site. There was a bunch of judges and stuff and I actually won cat, <clears throat> cash awards for that. And then Didsbury Show and Shine Committee. This website is the old one, so I actually have to go through like the web archive or, or whatnot to actually view it anymore. But and, and a lot of the stuff on the site is broken, but it kind of gives an understanding of what it looked like at one point in time. So then nearing out at the bottom here, this is a lot of the stuff that the guy was telling me that uh, is basically redundant, that I can just take it all out and save a lot of space. Other experience, I mean, I like to I like to do a lot of things and I like to talk about the other things that I do. So I founded a club on the university campus, the UofL UFOlogy group uh, last year, and it actually won an award for the best new... Uh, club on campus and so I put that up on there. I was a member of the Global Drums so there's that uh, music part that I did there. University of Lesbridge Competitive Programming Club. Uh, the Air Cadets, I was in the Air Cadets for six years. Um, I played the alto saxophone and in, in, I was a member of the, the uh, Video Yearbook Club and so all of that stuff I'm being told is basically redundant for a resume and it can be all trash because nobody really cares. Uh, nobody, I don't know, nobody seems to care about what you did before you finished high school, or not before you finished high school, before you finished university, nobody seems to care what you did prior to that, which is stupid, because most of the stuff that I've done was actually done prior to that. And then to finish off at the bottom here, I've got interest. I've got developing, testing, and playing video games, developing websites, technology and innovation, art design, and bodybuilding, and yeah, apparently nobody cares about that. And thus, having looked through all of the stuff that I have in my resume currently, this is my generic resume, so I do switch it up from time to time based on the specific job I'm applying for, but I basically take this template and modify it from here. But taking everything into consideration that I've been told over the past couple days from people that I've consulted about this, I will show you how I have gone about remodeling my resume so that it's maybe a little bit better and it won't get immediately rejected for being three pages long. So at the top here you can see that I've got my name still. Now I consolidated this onto a single line instead of having two lines that I have senior software developer, I changed it from engineer, and then I have that in the city that I'm at. And then the other two at the here, uh, bottom here are the ways to connect me, my phone number and my email address. And so that saves two lines just by doing that. And then what I did is I have a summary of four bullet points at the top here. And I've basically just taken 
taken these directly from my LinkedIn profile, and these are my main bullet points. I have coding in C++, C Sharp, JavaScript, HTML. So that's all the stuff that was further down on my resume before, and then I can modify it. I have it highlighted yellow here so you know that this section here and this section here are essentially the only two sections from this point on that I now have to modify to tailor to each specific job. Because as you can see, my other four bullet points earn uh, both my pilot's license, uh, private pilot and glider pilot's license as issued by Transport Canada. That was through the Air Cadets. Founded Pocketbug Games, a development studio that publishes games for iOS and Android, and studied computer science at the University of Lethbridge with a minor in physics, mathematics, and economics. Those three aren't going to change. The only thing that's going to change here is the coding languages that I'm going to specify based on whatever the job says the coding language is, or at least the main one is. And I may hack this down. So instead of having a huge list, I may just put relevant languages. So if the uh, application isn't even for website development, I mean, take JavaScript, HTML, CSS, PHP, take all that out. If it is for web development, then you don't need C++ or C Sharp. Take those out. And so you can modify it from there. And then down here, software skills. And so I took the education section that was at the top and I moved it down further. Now, I was told to do this because I guess that's the standard is to have your skills and stuff first. But thinking about it more logically from my perspective, because I did drop out of university, that's the worst possible thing to put on the front of my resume. Especially when I said it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that I only did three years of schooling. And so if the first thing they see is three was a schooling. Oh, he doesn't have a degree. He dropped out. That's it. That's at the top of the resume. They're not even going to go any further down. And so because I've taken that and I've moved that section down here, haha, now it's up to them to go searching for it. And if it pops up to them, when they get down to that section, well, they've already gone through all this other stuff. And so it's at least has the potential not to just be immediately rejected upon opening. And so, down to the software skills, I have basically the same things that I had before, but I just have them consolidated here. And I can actually move these up and maybe put them onto a single line. What I could do as well is I could do columns. I could do like a one column, two column, three column, and that'll save a bunch of space here. Or I could just take all of these and I could just limit it down to say five. Five at most software skills. So Windows OS and Linux. Okay, well, if the job doesn't entail OS X or Linux, and you assume that it's maybe on a Windows machine, then usually you don't even have to sp uh, specify that. Uh, Selenium and Git were in the most recent job application that I submitted, so those are on there. Uh, if I'm not using Xamarin or they say nothing about Microsoft Visual Studios, I mean, CodeIgniter is a framework for web development, so again, if the job is for game development, that doesn't even have to be in there. Take out Amazon AWS, and this is the section that's going to switch up the most along with the section above based on the coding languages that I use. So even now though, I have these now I have these nine lines here and like I said if I put them into columns where there's one column and then a middle column and then a right column then I'll take these nine things and I can get it down to just three lines and so I can switch up which nine things I display but I would say keep this section to about nine different things. Below that I have my work experience and I've basically kept it all the same except I've highlighted these two lines to show you that I'm going to take it out because it's not really that important or all interesting. Collaboration and creative design on new features. Cool. Nobody cares about that. Take that out. Daily communication and updates through Skype. I only put that on there because the job was remote, so if I'm applying for other remote jobs, then they may want to know that. But otherwise, take that out. Done. And so I have the same thing, the description of the job, the two points on what I did, and then you can see here, here's the job basically what the company was doing and then just highlight two things that I did at the company. Here's what the company was doing, highlight two things I did at the company. Here's my mobile games company, mobile games for Android and iOS, one, two, three things that I just highlight like that. And then education, boom. Now on the other one you can see that my education at the very top, I have it and it shows the Bachelor of Science, Computer Science, Minor in Physics, Mathematics. It looks all nice and fancy. But if you think about it, 
this is the way that it should be because this is uh, this is this is a resume modeled after your LinkedIn profile. Like I said, it has the summary at the top, like your LinkedIn profile. It has your skills and your work experience. When you have a LinkedIn profile, if you do have one, the education doesn't come till basically the bottom of the page because it's the least relevant thing that nobody cares about. And especially in my case, because I don't even have a degree, especially nobody's going to care about it. So therefore, it's in my best interest to make this section as small as possible and hide it as best as I possibly can. This is somewhere down on the second page, right down here, and they can easily skim past that. One, two, three lines, done. They can overlook that very easily and it's not going to be of any hindrance to me. Then I have my portfolio projects. Now, I was told, oh, you should put your uh, GitHub repository on there. Well, number one, I don't really use GitHub that often. And I know a lot of people that don't do GitHub either. I have a Bitbucket repository, which I did list up there. And I do have a lot of projects from school up there. But some people's mentality, and I do agree with this to some extent, is why am I going to spend all this extra time making stuff just for a portfolio project? I don't work for free. Like... That's, their, that's the mentality is I don't work for free, therefore I'm not going to have a huge listing of things that you can go and find on my repository. But whatever you know, each to their own. So game development, I have still here, I have the two global game gems that I did before. And then before what I changed is I had my two apps listed and those were the two most recent apps. But I've just consolidated it into my website, Pocket Bug Games, and I have it here, Slash Games. So this takes you to the page on my website that has a list of the games and it has the Android games, all four of them, and the iOS games, even though all the iOS links are broken, as I mentioned before. But now those two games, it has those two games plus all the others in addition. So that'll be a lot easier and a lot simpler. Website development, I put up here personal blog. This is brand new with this YouTube channel, is my jobless coder blog, and then tech skill studios, smog reports, virtual science fair. I might take these out. I mean, it is. Is 2011 2013 so it's fairly old experience and I don't even think like bootstrap was around back then I'm not quite sure uh, I know it wasn't built with bootstrap I used some program called web easy professional 8 and it was yeah it was 2010 2009 style looking website uh, and so it doesn't even look modern so it's not a great thing to showcase on my resume um, but it's one of the websites that I have so I did have it in there and like I said I'll probably take that out. Did be shown shine committee another old website that was built with web easy professional and I mean this is I enjoyed making this but it's like it's not even live anymore and it has to go through the web archive so I'll probably take that out as well and just leave it to the jobless coder tech skill studios and the smog reports which was some freelance work that I did. So then down here on the other experience section, so you can see this is all the stuff that I was told before that nobody really cares about. So I can take out the UFO club because nobody's going to care about that. Uh, now this is something that should be noted. It depends on the job you're applying to, at least in my field being the computer science. If I'm applying to some computer science company, like programming software company, that does something with music, then yes, it might be good to highlight that I was a member of the Global Drums. It might be good to highlight that I played the alto saxophone for eight years, but otherwise, nobody cares. If I'm applying for some job to work as a multimedia person, working on video creation, then yes, the video yearbook might actually be good. And if I'm applying to the military as some person who works on software for the military in some capacity, I know those jobs exist, then yes, the Air Cadets is good, but again, nobody cares. The only thing I might leave on here is the Competitive Programming Club, because it shows that I know, and I do know how to do that competitive programming style coding, which is not like regular coding, because it involves a lot of critical thinking and problem solving, and less of the actual coding. So now I have this other experience and I have the personal skills. Now this personal skills section I should mention is something that really only should be kept if the job you're applying to is a minimum wage. If you're applying to McDonald's, if you're applying to Walmart, if you're applying to, to Best Buy, any of the retailers, any of the food chains, just as a minimum wage job, then you want to keep this section in here because they can see, oh, you volunteer, you're a member with, or you were a member with the Air Cadets, you and your both, I'll take this part out because it's highlighted at the top. 
So I'll take this part out because it's one of the bullet points above. But then I see hardworking and determined, problem solving, honest and trustworthy. This is the stuff that those minimum wage jobs are going to care about because you're going to take out everything else from your resume applying to those jobs. You're going to take out the coding jobs and you're going to take out the programming experience because they don't care. It's not relevant. And what are you left with? Oh, well, you can't just give them a blank resume. You have to give them something. And so this personal skills section is basically going to be the only thing on your resume because that's like, what, it, what are you supposed to do? They don't care. It's, they don't care that you can code and, and, and build websites and apps and stuff. You're working at McDonald's flipping burgers. So this part, keep that in there only if you're applying to those type of jobs. Otherwise, I'll just take this out and we'll see how much more we can skim down from this resume and then you can see here interest this is another thing like developing testing playing video games i mean if you're somebody who's a coder chances are that's just a given developing websites it's probably a given technology and innovation it's probably a given art design is cool maybe maybe keep bodybuilding on there i mean it's a thing that i do as a hobby but if it has no relevance to the job take it out and there you go, and now we're down to two pages. So, like I said, a page and a half at most, I can get this section down here down to three lines by putting them into columns. I can maybe trim down some of the descriptions on the jobs there, and then I have my education, and I have my portfolio projects, and my other experience, and I'm good to go. So now I can take this resume and try applying for more jobs and see how it compares to the resume that I submitted before to all the other jobs. And you know, maybe I actually might start hearing back from people. And if I do, then I'll be sure to let you know. Otherwise, I hope that uh, some people have gained some value from this video on writing resumes. Uh, if you like the content, feel free to subscribe or check out my blog. I'll be making more blog posts in the future. Or follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Jobless Coder or uh, Jobless.coder on Instagram. So thank you for watching the video. Bye.